Hello, beloved, and welcome to uh, our weekly Bible study. And we are going to take a look at the work of the Holy Spirit in Revelation and in Inspiration. So that's basically what we're going to look at. The Holy Spirit's work in Revelation and Inspiration. Now, before we continue, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that teaches us more about the Holy Spirit. And I really want to pray, Father, that as we study your word, as we study about the Holy Spirit, that we will have a deep, solid understanding of your Spirit and the work of the Spirit. And Father, I pray, please um, enable me as your servant to teach your people and open up their hearts, my heart as well, but our hearts and our minds to receive and to understand this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, there's one thing that we need to understand, that there are certain things that only God can do. That's it. Only God can do those things. By, by the way, we, we accept those things by faith. No? Um, people who do not believe in God, who, who doesn't want to believe that there is a God, they will not accept these things. We accept these things by faith because God has poured out uh, a measure of faith in each one of us. In the first place, we've got saving faith, but then we also have faith to be able to believe that what God says is true, to believe that the Word is true, to believe, for example, that the Holy Spirit is the one who revealed God to us. That the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the scriptures. Somebody who doesn't believe in God will not believe these things. So sometimes what we do is, and, and I find myself doing it as well, I speak to someone who is basically a, a non-believer. Somebody who doesn't really believe in, in the Lord, uh, believe in God, I mean. And so what I do is, then I try to explain to them God's revelation. I try to explain to them that God inspired the Bible as if I am there to try to convince them that the Bible is inspired by God, that it's God's revelation, and that we can trust the Bible. They will never trust the Bible because they don't believe in God. They don't have the faith um, to basically believe that what God says and what God has done in the Bible, um, or through the Bible, as His revelation uh, that he inspired the Bible, so that oh, the writers of the Bible, so that they can basically write down for us um, who he is and and what he did for us. This is this is a matter of faith. It's not a matter of mind knowledge. It's not something that we can figure out with our minds. The things that we study needs to be spiritually discerned. It's not let's say, human philosophy. It is not uh, human reasoning. What we have, especially when we talk about the Holy Spirit, that is the one who, who basically revealed God to us. And when we talk about the Bible, there are people that can really, uh, how can I say, defend the fact that the Bible is the most amazing book ever written. You know, it was written over 1,500 years. It was written uh, by people on three different continents. Uh, it was written by people who really didn't know one another. It's written by people who come from different backgrounds, from kings to fishermen, not, to tax collectors, to uh, a doctor. Luke was a doctor. You know, that kind of thing. There, there's so many different writers um, uh, in, in the Bible. Daniel was a, was a prime minister, basically. So when we look at Scripture and we see all the amazing things about Scripture, it will not convince somebody who doesn't believe in God that they can trust the Bible and that it's a revelation of God and that we can believe that revelation and we can believe that it has been inspired in such a way that what we have in the Bible is the Word of God. It has to be accepted by faith. Beloved, Christianity is a faith, let's call it a faith-based religion. It's something that we believe. It's something that we, 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 we trust in God, that 
uh, he has given us his revelation that he inspired the writers of the bible to write these the, the, the bible so that we can have his revelation i i, I, I am how can I say, I, I like to watch YouTube videos, I like to listen to even unbelievers as they reason about the Bible, as they say different things about the Bible, as they say things about God in the sense of God doesn't exist and, and debates where it is debated that yes, God exists and others says that God doesn't exist, how they use philosophy and they use re reasoning and they re use logic and they re use morality and all these kind of things to try to to basically prove that God is real obviously we have nature as well um, and anybody that looks at nature must be able to say but if we look at nature there seems to be a designer but that's as far as people can go there is a designer there is someone greater than creation that made all of these things and that should start people off to start seeking for the one who created all these things and that will always if they start seeking after god if you if we seek we shall find if somebody starts seeking after the creator of the universe uh, they will find god they will find christ they will come to a saving knowledge of of uh, christ because that is the beginning point nature is the thing that actually kind of reveals to us that there is something greater and when we start seeking that something greater we will find god but when when it comes to faith when it comes to the bible when it comes to uh, the existence of god when it it's not a matter of philosophy it's not a matter of reasoning it's not a matter of logic it's not a matter of morality it is a matter of faith and that faith to believe that god exists to believe that jesus christ died on my behalf to believe that I have eternal life because of what Jesus Christ did for me. It's all faith. I am justified by faith. And this is the amazing thing about uh, the, the, how can I say, Christianity. Because biblical Christianity is not a religion. It is, a, how can I say, it is a relationship with the Almighty God. Because God, you remember, He created Adam and Eve. And he lived in a relationship with them. And then sin came into the world and it destroyed that relationship between Adam and Eve and God. All right, so God did something to restore that relationship so that we can be reconciled with God again. But these are all things that we have to believe. We can try to reason about it. We can try to convince people about these things. But if somebody doesn't believe in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, if that person hasn't been born again, that person cannot understand spiritual things because spiritual things need to be spiritually discerned through the Holy Spirit and physical things can be looked at and reasoned about and all these kind of things. So don't be caught up in this, this idea that we can basically use reason to get to God, that we can use logic to get to Christ, that we can use philosophy to figure out salvation. It, it doesn't work. It is a spiritual thing. All right, that's a lot said, but, but I believe when it comes to the work of the Holy Spirit in revelation and inspiration, it is a matter of faith. What I'm going to share with you when it comes to revelation and when it comes to inspiration, I, I need to say this to you, that if you, if you believe it, uh, because the Holy Spirit has enabled you to believe it, then it will be a blessing to you. But if you don't believe it, if you are skeptical, there's nothing that I can do, nothing that I can share with you that will get you to the point where you will believe that Scripture, the Bible, is God's revelation, that it has been inspired by the Holy Spirit, and that we can trust every word that is in the Bible. I cannot convince you of that. So what I'm sharing with you with regards to this topic of the work of the Holy Spirit in revelation and inspiration is a matter of faith. Just like our salvation is a matter of faith, where we, are, where we trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's a matter of faith. He is the one who made it possible for us to believe. Now, it's the Holy Spirit who basically did something in us. He, he, he made us alive so that we can actually 
uh, see Jesus Christ for who he is. So we can believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father through him. Yes, it's written. These things are all written. But you will find that there's a person, or there will be a person that that believes, uh, that does not believe, and you can share all these things with him, but they will they will not care about it. They 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 really will not. It won't won't mean anything to them. All right. So what we have, and and it's something that is extremely important, beloved, is those who are born again receive the gift of faith, a measure of faith to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, received saving faith, and we have received a measure of faith so that we can believe Scripture, that we can believe in the revelation of God of Himself. We can believe in inspiration. Okay, so if I say to you that there are certain things that only God can do, then it means that those who believe that God exists, those who believe what the scripture teaches about God, they will believe that there's, there, are only, that there are certain things that only God can do. Because it's the Bible that tells us now of many things that cannot be done by man or cannot be done by any other power, or any, any other entity except God himself. It can only be done by God. And two of these things are basically revelation and inspiration. Nah? Um, but what does it mean? What, what does it mean if I talk about revelation? Now, revelation, in, in a biblical sense, nah? revelation basically means showing something which was hidden before okay so a revelation is basically to reveal something to open up something that was hidden before and now it it becomes it comes into the open it is now revealed it is now shown for what it is so when we speak of the revelation by god we are speaking of god revealing himself to mankind that's basically what we what we are saying to to one another god revealing himself to mankind now what is important here is if god did not reveal himself to us we would never ever be able to know anything about him and, and th- this is the reality we would never ever be able to know anything about him uh, Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Now, I've got to go and find it because uh, I'm not actually prepared for that. But let's go Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, um, let's start with verse 1. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on, uh, on your feet and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet and I heard him who spoke to me. So here, Ezekiel um, is basically, how can I say, the Holy Spirit comes and he enters into him and he sets him on his feet so that the Holy Spirit can basically speak to Ezekiel. Okay? So, it is God through the Spirit who reveals himself to people. If God did not do this to Ezekiel, would Ezekiel know about God? Would he know about the fact that the Holy Spirit can enter into somebody? Now, I'm talking about in the Old Testament now. Now, if we go to Ezekiel 8 verse 3, we read the following. Uh, Ezekiel 8 verse 3, it says, He stretched out the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my hair, and the Spirit filled me up between earth and lifted me up, sorry, between earth and heaven and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the north gate of the inner court where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provokes to jealousy. So, once again, something happens to Ezekiel that is beyond people's understanding. Now, if we were to talk to people about this and just share this with somebody, um, Ezekiel was lifted up between heaven and earth and he had a re- vision of Jerusalem and he could see the gate 
And if we would share that with somebody and we say, this actually happened, somebody would say to us, somebody who doesn't believe would say to us, nonsense, absolute nonsense. Why would they say that? Because if somebody wants to figure this out with logic, if somebody wants to figure it out through philosophy, through reasoning, there's no way that somebody can believe it because it's supernatural. It is spiritually discerned. You've got to discern about these things spiritually. Now, it is said that this happened to Ezekiel. Why do we believe it? We believe it because it's revelation. We wouldn't have known what happened to Ezekiel if he didn't write it down. So what did he write down? He wrote down what happened to him. So can we trust that what happened to Ezekiel is revelation from God? Of course, because we believe scripture is true. But somebody who doesn't believe in the word of God, that person will not accept it. They will not accept what happened to Ezekiel. It is just a, a, a fact of life. Beloved, so sometimes what happens is we would share amazing truths that we find in Scripture. And, and we would share it with people who do not believe in God or who are not spiritual. And it would seem as if what you are saying kind of goes in the one ear and flies out the other ear. It is because it, it was we, we read that do not feed your pearls to the swine. No, don't feed your pearls to the pigs. Because what we receive as a revelation from God are like pearls. And don't feed it to, to the pigs. Because if you take uh, pearls and you throw it to the pigs, they're not going to make a necklace out of it. They're going to trample it into the, into the ground, into the mud, because they love the mud. That's their nature. Now, if we take the word of God, this is a comparison thing. Now, if we take the word of God, if we take the revelation of God and how God revealed himself in scripture and we share it with non-believers, they will just trample on it. And why? Because it means nothing to them. It is not pearls to them. To them, they don't care. Right? Because of their sinful nature. Anything that is of value, anything that is of worth, anything that is beautiful and moral and God-honoring, they won't care about it. They will just trample it underfoot. All right. So when we talk about revelation, revelation means to basically show something that has been hidden before. Yeah? That's how God basically, or revelation is God revealing himself to us as, as human beings. Because if God did not reveal himself to us, we would know nothing about God. Except, if we would look at, uh, at, at creation, we would be able to say to one another, well, it seems as if there's design behind creation. And by the way, when we look at creation today, there are people that says, whoa, look at the world and, and God's creation. It's so beautiful. It is so good. Uh, that's not true. Creation is cursed. Creation is under sin. This creation that we look at now, we can see there's a designer, but it has been broken. Yeah, there is some beauty in creation. But creation has been, con uh, been destroyed by, um, by sin. It is not what it's supposed to be. Th there was a worldwide flood that um, destroyed this earth. At the end of the day, what we see now is not... Uh, and it was good. You remember when God said, and he looked at his creation and he said it was good. He actually said it was very good. Uh, when sin entered into the world, it was no longer very good. But we can still see a creator behind it. All right. But if we did not have God's revelation of himself, if we didn't have, uh, let's say, for example, God's revelation about how things came into existence in the book of Genesis, we would never know. We would come up with theories like the theory of evolution. We would come up with theories like the Big Bang. We would come up with theories, all kinds of theories of how the world came into existence. Existence like um, aliens came and created this earth and all kinds of things like that. But we have God's revelation. And for those who believe, it is the wisdom of God. And it is amazing to know this. But for those who do not believe, they don't care. They really don't care. 
All right, so revelation is basically God revealing himself to us, to mankind. Eh? And then inspiration. If I had to explain what inspiration means, inspiration basically means God's work of watching over the writers of the Bible so that what they wrote down was accurate and without error. And that what they wrote down was exactly what God wanted to say. Uh, what Exactly what God wanted to reveal about himself. Now, we know that the writers of the Bible had different personalities. Now, they were different people. And they had different personalities. So we can actually see their personalities in their writings. But the thing is, they were accurate when they wrote down the revelation of God. Why were they accurate? Because the Holy Spirit inspired them. And this is where inspiration comes from. So revelation is basically God revealing himself to us. And inspiration is God protecting or God enabling the writers of the Bible to write down an accurate, um, how can I say, an, an accurate revelation or you know, to, to be accurate in God's revelation of himself. All right. So God was watching over the writers of the Bible. And that is basically... Uh, where inspiration come from. Okay, so there are basically these two things which only God can do, is to reveal himself, okay, and to inspire the writers of the Bible to write down an accurate record of his revelation of himself. Okay, so when we go to the Bible, when we read the Bible, we actually find that the Holy Spirit was active in these two things. He was active in revealing God to us. Remember the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, also revealed to us in Scripture. We would not have known about the Trinity if it wasn't revealed to us in Scripture. So what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit was active in revealing God to us, and the Holy Spirit was very active also in the inspiration of the writers to write down an accurate record of God's revelation. Right, so and now in the next two um, sessions, if I can say it like that, in the next two parts, we are basically going to look at revelation, yeah, the Holy Spirit's work in revelation, and then we're going to look at the Holy Spirit's work in uh, inspiration. Those are the two things that we're going to look at uh, in the next two parts of uh, our study on the Holy Spirit. I believe it's exciting. It is extremely exciting. This was like an introduction, but I, I just wanted to share these things with you because I believe it's important for us to understand them. Let's close our eyes in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can come to you. Thank you so much for your revelation, which is true. Thank you that we can believe it, that you have revealed it to us through the Holy Spirit that in, indwells us. Thank you that we can believe it because uh, it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to believe. And thank you so much for your inspiration that you inspired the writers of the Bible to write down what you wanted revealed. But thank you so much, Father, that you protected them and you made sure. Uh, and th that's what the Holy Spirit did, is to make sure that what they wrote down was accurate. And thank you that we can have it in the form of the Bible. We praise you and we thank you and we pray that uh, you, you will enable us to continue to believe, to continue to study your revelation, to continue to believe in the inspiration and at the end of the day to, how can I say, to form our, wor our lives and to make sure that our lives are in line with your revelation. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Beloved, thank you very much for listening. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you his peace as we read God's revelation of himself and as we believe that he inspired the writers of the Bible to be accurate without any mistakes so that we can have his revelation and that we can study it and, and uh, enjoy the, to know more and more about the Almighty God that we worship. May the Lord be with you. Uh, until God willing, next time, bye-bye.